So we'll call the meeting for Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021 to order and the usual required reminders. Uh, actually, let's see, we're not recording yet. John, are we okay to start? Okay, there we go. All right, so the meeting is being recorded and uh, present from the select board, you have Jane Nevin Smith, Christian Stanley, Joyce Chunglo, myself, David Phil, and John Weskevitz. Um, all votes will be taken via roll call and we will start off with the consent agenda. Uh, we have minutes from April 15th, 2020, April 22nd, 2020. We have warrants PR2011, PR2115, AP2131, AP2131S, and PR2116. Use of the town commons, park and recreation, horse-drawn wagon rides. I'll do the, uh, would like more information on the horse-drawn horse drawn rides. Um, we'll make a vote to accept the minutes. The minutes and the warrants? Yes. Okay, could I get a, uh, Jennifer? Can you, can you not vote on the minutes? You've actually already approved those. I was, I, I added the wrong ones, but you, so you'll just have extra next week, but just take the minutes off, please. Okay, so we're just voting on warrants then. Joyce, can you modify your motion there? Certainly, I'll make a motion to accept the warrants. Okay. Second. Second by Christian. And any further discussion on the warrants? Uh, roll call vote, please, Jennifer. Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Skevitt? Yes. Okay, so uh, let's talk about horse-drawn wagon rides on the common. Is anybody here to talk about that or anybody have details on it? I do. Okay, good. Um, so the attachment is on there. Um, I have sent it to Mike and Mike and Chris. Um, uh, Mike Mason was okay with it. Um, he said that he was happy to support Park and Rec however they needed. Um, they did, Melissa Aloisi did go to um, the Board of Health and the Board of Health felt that the program met the COVID guidelines. Um, if you, the event they want to do is on the 19th. So if you are going to, um, if you're going to vote on it, if they need to advertise. But the other thing is, um, I wasn't, I haven't heard back from Chris or Mike Spank Nabel about it yet. I was going to ask that you put conditions on it if you do approve it this evening. Are we going to have, is it going to be on one side of the common more than the other? How is that going to run? She was talking to the gentleman who was working with her about whether or not, I guess it's dependent on snow on whether or not they would actually just ride on the commons itself or go into the street. Okay. So we would have to block off one of the streets or the other. I don't believe so. I can, I don't see her here. Um, well, I, I, I would vote yes on it with contingent on um, just these answers to be, you know, to make a little bit more uh, know what the what the what they're actually going to do. I mean, yeah, we can vote. Yes, there can be rides, but are they going to be on the common? They're going to be on the street. Are we going to have to block the streets off? Um, you know, we don't want to certainly spook the horses on one way or another, you know, so you have to take that all into consideration also. So. Um, so again, do we, I, want to, do we want to approve it or approve them to advertise it or announce it and then uh, make them come back in front of the select board for a final approval or how, what is the date of this? It's on the 19th. I went ahead and put it on. Um, and I, I mean, Mike, Mike has been very busy and Chris Okafer got hit with the storm, but I knew if they were going to advertise, it was going to have to go onto this agenda. So um, like I said, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I just want to have more details if they're, again, if they're not going to use the common explicitly and they're going to be using the roadways, then, you know, I think my Mason should chime in on it a little bit more because we may need to block off if they're going to use the north side of the common, 
uh, and make it so that it's circular, um, you know, that would have to have streets blocked off for that. Um, again, you're not going to have horses going around the common on the street and having vehicles go that way too. So that's, that's not even feasible. Well, when I used to live on the common, they actually did that and the horses are well trained to be around traffic. So I think that it really depends upon the snow and Chris Okafer and the condition and Mike. So I would move that we approve this pending approval and more details, but let them start advertising it. But what, what you said also is, is that if we approve it, we're liable. So I think, you know, looking into this a little bit further, making sure, I still think it should be blocked off. I know it's great to have them travel around the common. I have no problem with that. Uh, and I know the horses are trained with vehicles and stuff, but the amount of traffic sometimes going around on that common coming from Amherst, I think is a detriment. So I, I, I really would like some, somebody to chime in on this um, just to make sure that it's safe and what the liability is for us in sponsoring something like this too. So we don't want anybody to get hurt while they're on these horses. I, I don't have a problem with it except for that. I wanted to make sure that it's safe or not. We're not liable or whatever for anything. Is it a sleigh ride or is it a wheel ride? It would depend on the snow, I would imagine. Well, that's what I mean. It didn't really say in the application. So. Right. Could we, could, just a suggestion, could we make a motion to just give the chair authority to approve it pending um, the fire chief and police chief's recommendation, just so that kind of David can make the decision whether to do it or not once he, we hear from the police chief and the fire chief and DPW. Is that? I, I guess he's responsible enough. We could do that. <laughs> no, Joyce, I'm sure he wouldn't mind delegating it to you if you want to be the uh, person. No, the I, he, no, no. He's the, <laughs> he's the chair. So I make a motion that David uh, take the responsibility and yay or nay after everybody else has chimed in on it. That's fine with me. I'll second that. Okay, so motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any other discussion on this? Uh, roll call yeah, vote. I, I, yeah, I guess I'm supposed to be their liaison. I finally got a hold of one of the board members. Uh, you know, I, I they're they're hard bunch to get a hold of. I haven't even got a hold of their new uh, secretary even. I've been trying to talk to her, but I, I don't know. A little lack of communication over there. You can talk to Jim Shea. He's right there on Middle Street. He's more than happy to talk to anybody. I know. I I gave uh, um, uh oh, John, you muted yourself. Yeah, I see that. He's thinking. Yeah, I spoke with one of them, and he was supposed to give Jim Shea my number, and I haven't heard from him yet. So, Okay. Any other comments, discussion? No. All right, nope. Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Nevin Smith? She's muted. Yes. Okay. And with Skevitz. Yes. Thank you. All right. Let me get back to the window here. Public comments. Uh, 15 minutes. Please limit your comments to three minutes each. And we'll take turns so everyone who is patiently waiting to make public comments has a chance. If anybody here is uh, here for public comments, please turn on your camera or raise the digital hand and make yourself known. Last call. All right, moving on. Uh, Carolyn, you want to hit the administrator report real quick? Uh, Dr. Moser is going to join around uh, uh, 545, so I was kind of waiting for her. She has a little sure. bit of a note. So. Sure. Okay. sure, and I'll, and I'll be quick. Um, I wanted to just let you know that we are, all of the department heads have turned in, most of the department heads have turned in, chairs have turned in their budget requests for uh, FY22, 
as per your request, they have submitted level funding and level service, and we'll talk more about that when we do our presentation. We've also, the, our in-house finance team, uh, which includes Dan, Linda, and Susan and myself, have been working very uh, specifically on um, reconciling FY21, where we're at with expenses and revenues, which I will be presenting to you um, at the next meeting. Um, but we have been spending a lot of time on that. So what we'd like to do as we get things wrapped up for FY21 and prepare for FY22, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to present on the 17th of this month. I'd like to just um, uh, go further out to March 3rd, if the board's okay with that. You'll, we'll just have better accurate numbers and I think it would be better for everybody. And I'll have a tri board meeting for that as well. Uh, let's see. Um, just from Jessica, the clerk, Tuesday, March 9th is the last day to file nomination papers with the town clerk and last day for a select board to put a non-binding question on the ballot if you choose. My understanding is you do not have one at this point. Right, okay, I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, I did follow up with the PBTA uh, bus stop snow removal. I talked with Paul Burns from PBTA. Uh, they explained they are underfunded and do not have enough staff to do it for all of their area for the whole Pioneer Valley. Um, but they are looking to pursue and adopt a stop to be working. They're going to reach out to some of the larger businesses to see if they'd be willing to um, take ownership of cleaning out those, uh, those bus stops. So we'll see where that goes. Um, I did want to let you know too that because I, I'm kind of in a unique position where um, I represent two towns, Wolverham and Hadley, both who have uh, roller state rinks, both interstate. I did contact the governor's uh, the lieutenant governor's office and spoke with her assistant Jessica to explain to her the challenges that the roller skating rinks were having and if they could reevaluate where they were looking at, what category they fit in with because both of these uh, businesses are really struggling. So um, I did have a good conversation. In, in fact, invited anyone from the Lieutenant Governor's Office to come out and just look to see that how they fit in um, more so with the gym category that are able to open. Uh, they said that they would, um, you know, be looking into it. But I just want to just let you know that we are doing what we can to help out um, our local business. And. Let's see, uh, Hatfield sent an invitation. They are having their 350th anniversary on May 30th and inviting, inviting all the towns. They're having a rolling parade, not where people come and sit and watch it, but it's in go through their town about seven miles. And they're inviting surrounding towns to participate with floats or whatever, any resident can have any, if they wanna participate. And just um, reporting back from the MMA annual meeting, I know John and Jane attended. I don't know if they wanted to share anything about what the workshops they sat in. Um, it was very different. It was, I did make a mistake, Stephanie, I mean, uh, Jennifer told me not to sit in my office and attend the remote meeting. And it was really difficult. I got interrupted a lot. So um, I don't know, Jane and John, if you have anything to add, I don't have anything else to add, but if you want to give any input, I, I don't know if you want to talk about the MMA meeting was for you? Well, it was my first MMA meeting, and given that it was on Zoom, I'm sure it was different than what everybody had talked about. I found it interesting that a lot of their seminars had to do with diversity, and that that's a big focus that the state and the towns are looking at now because it has come to the forefront. Yeah, exactly. I'm actually late at night i've been watching a few of the other sessions they have them on a little bit uh longer through i think through the end of the month and uh i've been through about half of them some of them are, are pretty technical but a lot of them were race and just uh diversity so i sat in on a couple of those uh it was good uh I'd like to see it stay online. I just like the extension of time. So after the live meetings, you do have time to go over the, the sessions that you missed. If you want to, if you're that interested in it and you want to look into them, uh, there some of them are, are pretty interesting. So. Great. 
All right, that's all I have. Uh, Thank one, you. one more thing. I don't know. I probably should have said it in a public comment period. But uh, I, have you had anybody come into the town hall about the uh, bike way, bike lanes on Route 9 proposed? They have not come in to talk with me. I think we got a letter right when I first started a couple months ago. All right. Because I, I got a couple of emails of a couple of complaints, and I, I think it's just a lack of communications. There's a set of plans at the DPW, and there's a set of plans in the town hall. And the people that are concerned and criticizing this board, I am not for the bike lanes on Route 9. There's going to be a six-foot buffer on each side, and there's going to be a six-foot combination lane, pedestrian and bicycle lane, on each side of Route 9, well off the travel lanes. And I think that's what the people don't understand. And I think, I wish the paper would give me a call or maybe I need to call them and, and get some pictures and see if we can put them in a paper and explain to the folks uh, what they're proposing and, and why, why we're against one and not against the other. So. Okay. I, I, I appreciate that also, John. And I'm, I'm for the public safety. I know I've gotten criticized about my vote yes. and, putting, and putting them back on the bike path, but Again, that's what the bike path, bike path was used for. But again, I'm also concerned that when Route 9 widens to four lanes, two on each side, it already, I mean, really, it's like Indy 500. And I've kept saying this, that even from the center of town all the way to the bridge, it's like a mad dash every stinking morning that I go to work. And yep. people are not going 40 miles an hour they should be going 35 through the center of town and then they continue to go about 50 miles an hour all the way to the bridge yeah, um, i think the highest ticket the police department's written so far was 80 miles an hour through that section first thing in the morning and people yes so and so so now you're going to open it up from east street all the way to the mall with more lanes we're going to be like Memorial Drive, or we're going to be like uh, in West Springfield on that on that road. So and I will we'll, we'll come back. I I just realized that uh, Deb has to leave right at six o'clock, and that's okay. my for forgetting that. But I will right. remind me. We'll we'll talk about Route Nine later in this meeting, and, and uh, we can chat about it. But I just don't want Deb to uh, not have a chance to to talk with, about what she has to talk about. Certainly, thank you. All right, Deb, are you ready? You're muted. Sign language. Yeah. The host, my, the host keeps muting me. So it's uh, my okay. Phone. There you go. You're good so now. Uh, so uh, the first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, at Carolyn's request a reserve fund transfer support for a reserve fund transfer from the finance committee uh, for the HR department uh, salary line item. Inadvertently, uh, first of all, we're asking for a $6,500 transfer for the current fiscal year. Uh, inadvertently, the FY21 budget voted at town meeting did not include uh, an amount to cover the director's 7.5% contribution to the Hampshire County retirement system during his military leave. Uh, and that's about uh, $4,800. And in addition, he's, the good news is he's coming back a little bit earlier than anticipated. Uh, he'll be coming back in the beginning or middle of March. And in order to provide for a one week overlap between he and I, uh, we need another $1,700 to cover that. So we're looking for support for a $6,500 reserve fund transfer. So moved. Okay, motion by Joyce, could I get a second? Second. Second by Jane. Any other discussion on the reserve fund transfer? Jennifer? Bill? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Muscovitz? No. 
why. <laughs> uh, I'd like a little bit more information on it. And has finance committee looked at this or not? I mean, we really don't. I mean, it passed, but we really don't have a choice just because of the military and employer regulations on what we have to fund. Uh, and then with, with him coming back a little bit early. So it's, it's not like this is a kind of a luxury, but um, unfortunately it's, it's money that we have to spend. But, okay, Deb, go ahead. It, it's, the, it's the finance committee has to vote on it. And all we're, I'm asking for is your support. And it has not yet been presented to them. Okay. Have you taken a vote? Yep. Oh, okay. Everyone. Sorry. Yep. So the second item, uh, is Chris Okafor on? He is, yes. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. Okay, Carolyn and Chris and I, with uh, input from the Select Board Department liaison, want to present to you a small reorganization of the administrative functions <laughs> of the Department of Public Works. I think I gave you an org chart and two job descriptions uh, that are included in this proposal for your review as I, as I take you through this. And I guess I'll preface it by saying that every time there's a retirement or a vacancy in a department, it's a great opportunity to take a step back and ask, how can we be doing this better? How can we be more efficient administratively and remain operationally sound and how can we be more economically responsible to the taxpayer? I think as I walk you through this proposal, we can achieve all of this without adding staff and by promoting from within. We currently have a director, a field superintendent, or an operations coordinator, and an administrative assistant. That's four FTEs. What we're proposing is a director, a field superintendent, an administrative coordinator versus an operations coordinator and a three-fifths administrative assistant for a total of 3.6 FTEs. Um, so starting with the operations coordinator was a hybrid position with responsibilities, uh, both administrative and operational, significantly operational for the water department. And we're proposing to completely split administrative and operational responsibilities. And the technical aspects of that job uh, have been transferred to Chris and the water department staff already. And the operational and management supervision responsibilities are proposed to be transferred completely to the field superintendent. And with this transfer, 100% of DPW operations staff will report to or through the field superintendent. So our first thing is we wanna propose that the field superintendent position be reclassified to a salaried exempt position and further that it be placed on the town's salary schedule at grade five. Um, right now it's, we hired Scott as non-exempt and he's not on any salary schedule. Um, in order to reclassify him as salaried exempt, we have to recognize these additional responsibilities assume he's in this, he is assuming, and we wanna fold in all other forms of stipends, clothing and allowances, and uh, the compensation time that he has earned uh, on behalf of the town for all the extra hours he's put in uh, over the last year. So I took a look at everything he earned last year and um, hold, making him whole, we would like to place him at step nine of the salary chart at $3,021.60 biweekly. Uh, and I'll be requesting a vote uh, to that effect. I would like a vote to reclassify the, his position to non-union salaried exempt grade five and place him at step nine on the salary chart. I'll make that motion. I'll second and any comment from David, who's the liaison? 
Yeah. Um, all right. So we have a motion by Jane, second by Joyce. And I think this is a good step forward. Uh, the way the organizational chart worked before was some people reported to the field superintendent to Chris, some people reported to the water operations person separately. This way, everybody, you know, Scott and Chris have a grasp on what everybody's doing in the department versus different supervisors at different levels. So I think this will streamline things and maybe save us a little bit of money in the long run with the comp time and the time off. So. Okay. Do you want to take a vote now or you want to keep going no, we'll, on? We'll, uh, we'll take a vote and uh, okay. knock that out. Any other comments on this real quick? No, sounds good. Jennifer, go ahead. We'll call the Hill. Yes. Chungalo. Yes. Stanley. Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Abstain. Okay, thank you. Uh, the second item is that the operations coordinator, we'd like to reclassify that as a, an administrative coordinator. Uh, and that will change it from grade seven on the salary chart to grade six on the non exempt salary chart. Um, the position will have an expanded role in operating and capital budget presentation. It will provide administrative support to all divisions, and it's going to maintain the department uh, page on the website and all social media. It will have a lower rate of pay, uh, and we are asking to classify the administrative coordinator position on grade six of the non-exempt salary chart. And further, we did conduct a pretty comprehensive recruitment and screening process for this position that included Chris Okafor, the town collector, and myself. Uh, and we are recommending that the current administrative assistant, Jessica Perrin, Jessica Perrin be promoted to administrative coordinator at grade six, level six. Uh, the two adjustments, the field superintendent salary and uh, the promotion of Jessica will result in about a $10,000 annual savings. And in addition to that, we are proposing a 60-40 sharing of the now soon to be vacant administrative assistant position with the treasurer's office. We think there's some real value in uh, focusing this job on financial support for both offices that'll strengthen the relationships between DPW and town hall. Uh, it will reduce the administrative salaries by 0.4%, uh, 40, 4 tenths of 1% of an FTE at the DPW and increase some administrative capacity at the town hall. Uh, Chris and Linda have committed to working together to recruit and share this position. And uh, we're pretty excited about it. Right now, we've been um, paying our town treasurer uh, her salary to do things like stuff and fold stuff envelopes and, you know, fold letters and stuff like that. And she'll be getting some uh, financial administrative support if this is approved. So the request is to classify the administrative coordinator position on grade six on the non-union, non-exempt salary schedule and to promote Jessica Perrin to the position at grade six, level six. So moved with explanation from David also. Okay, so uh, motion by Joyce and second by Jane. And with our hiring freeze in place, uh, just to be clear, we are still not creating any new positions. We had um, Sharon retire from the water department. Congratulations to Sharon on escaping. And uh, so we're gonna be moving Jessica up to Sharon's old job with a slightly different job description and then hiring somebody new to take Jessica's spot, but also sharing that position with town hall because we don't really need the full-time administrative assistant 
in the DPW, but the town hall could use the extra help. So I think Deb mentioned a $10,000 savings overall with all these moves and hopefully give Linda a little bit more assistance in town hall. Okay. Yes. You're so much more succinct. You got the hard stuff out of the way. So any, <laughs> other, any other comments on this? Yeah. Are, are you going to hire from the 40 applicants you had for the uh, vacating position or not? That's the goal. Sounds good. And okay. just a clarification, uh, the admin person is going to be union or they're going to be exempt? They're going to be non-union, non-exempt. Non-union, non-exempt. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right, Jennifer. No call vote, Phil. Yes. Chungalo. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Stanley. Yes. Wiskevitz. Upstate. Thank you. All right. Is that it, Deb? Thank you very much, and my mother thanks you. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Good night. Good night. All right. And Dr. Moser, I apologize, but she had to, to run out right at six. So sorry to push you off like that. But if you want to give the uh, Board of Health update, that would be great. Uh, no, no problem. I, I was getting excited. I thought some of that administrative extra help was going to come over to the Board of Health, but didn't, didn't <laughs> quite go my way. Um, <laughs> Uh, not a lot of, a uh, lot new, the, um, case count in Hadley, I would say over the last week is, is gone down significantly, no, the no, much lower number of new cases. That being said, uh, you know, we're still at a, at a really high level compared to the peak that we had in the spring and, uh, with the uh, spread of, of new variants, which uh, appear to be more contagious, uh, the CDC is predicting, uh, I just heard 85,000 more deaths this month uh, and uh, probably another surge in, uh, in positive cases over the next few months. So uh, that's where we are. Uh, vaccines are rolling out. Supplies seem to be increasing a bit to Western Massachusetts uh, due to the work of our legislators and we are champion, championing on. Dr. Mosler? Uh, Dr. Mosler? Yes. Yes, so our, our uh, citizens who uh, have Cooley Dick providers aware that they can sign up for the vaccine I didn't, so, understand. I didn't so understand. Is that a question? So, so people that um, have a uh, CDMG practice, such as Hadley Family Practice, Amherst Family Practice, um, uh, Northampton Family Practice, all of these patients are being offered a time slot to go and get their COVID testing. Right. Uh -huh. Cooley, Cooley Practices will be uh, administering vaccines. Correct. We've up. We we've, we've increased uh, it by. I I can't tell you how much, but all practices have uh, their MAs and people are volunteering to make sure that we are going to be able to um, increase the vaccines to quite a number. So I hope this. I don't mean to take out your your thing there, but I'm hoping people are aware of that. That's all I was hoping. The other thing I would like to say is um, they're still working on making this um, user friendly for people over 75 who are in the current group. And if there are people who are not computer literate, who would like to sign up for a vaccine and do not belong to a Cooley health practice, um, the senior center is available to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really great. That is good. Dr. Mosler, are, are we under the 3% threshold in Hadley? I have not gotten the new, uh, the new data. I think it comes out on Thursdays. Okay. Okay. But I, 
I don't think we will because it's two weeks. You know, they go by two weeks of cumulative data. So mm -hmm. I, I don't mm -hmm. know where where it will be. Okay, thank you. So are our town buildings still remaining closed? Is that? Yeah, we haven't discussed any reopening, and I know that uh, the senior center has a, a plan for their projected reopening, but uh, we haven't made any changes as of now. I do have a request for that whenever it comes up tonight. So, Dr. Mosler, do you think um, after Thursday when we have an idea of what the threshold is, should we still be using that 3% threshold as the school department has been had been using? Um, prior to the uh, uptake of the COVID, should that kind of be like our guideline, do you think, for the town? It, it's such a complex issue, Joyce. I think mm -hmm. part of it is where our priorities lie. Mm -hmm. uh, part of it is how much illness and death that we are willing to accept uh, as the price that we pay for, for reopening. And I don't think there's any right or wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, I think the select board's going to have to think that through and, uh, you know, understanding again, that, that we, we do have variants now that are much more contagious. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, um, we're not seeing that yet. I think at Cooley, do you have your feel with that at, uh, from your I, context? I think we have no idea because the, mm -hmm. the, we have not been doing, there's not a lot of uh, strain identification that's been going on. That's being ramped up now. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Jane, do you want to talk about the senior center, what you're requesting while Dr. Moser's here? So that way, she, if she could add any input. So the staff at the senior center would request that we be allowed to open for seniors one at a time for only a half an hour with a half an hour in between uh, clients use our physical equipment room, which is a safe place and it would keep them out of gyms and help them keep physically fit. We were doing this before we closed down in December and it was going very well. They call in advance, they make an appointment, they have a specific time slot, and we would like to reinstate that. So one at a time, Jane? One at a time and a half an hour between them and everything gets wiped down between them. Mm -hmm. I, don't have, I don't have a problem with that. Do you, Dr. Mosler? It's hard to say no. I, <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it seems so reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that uh, the library is wanting to, I was going to discuss this at, at, with my colleagues at the Board of Health meeting tomorrow night, but of course it's predicated on, on the select board's uh, decisions. But I know the library uh, reached out to me uh, this week and they would like to open up to allow for some students to come in for for tutoring and the like, you know, in small rooms. Uh, I mean, you know, in not not a bunch of people in one big room. Um, well, I, with the, the, CD, the CDC is, and I, I teach a class every week with joint replacement, and I cannot have any more than 10 people in, and they have to be six feet apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they, they, they weren't planning on having a group of, of people. Uh, so okay, individual. Uh, uh, it, you know, I mean, less is always safer, but, but there mm -hmm. are mitigating factors here. And, mm -hmm. you know, certainly when we're considering our seniors and we're considering our young people, our students, or people who are isolated and want to go sit in the library for a half an hour. Mm -hmm. So today was my kids' first day back in school in in-person learning because, you know, they were supposed to start on Monday because of the snow. They did remote the last two days or canceled. <laughs> uh, so they're happy to be back. And yeah. um, I'm, I'm sure the seniors are in the same boat with wanting to get out of the house in a safe way. So uh, it's, it sounds like a good idea to me, and it sounds fairly safe 
and something that we can monitor if the, if we get a spike, if, if something happens, then we can always reverse the course. So that's kind of my thinking on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, th- I think as long as we stay open-minded and we're flexible. Mm-hmm. And using precautions, I, I don't have a problem with it. Could I get a motion to that effect, please? I'll make a motion for the senior center to be able to be open uh, one individual at a time with cleaning in between a half an hour and uh, they can so set up the schedule. So I can second that. Okay, motion by Joyce, second by Christian. I and- just would like to, I don't know if we can roll anything in or take a separate motion with the library, you know, if they want to do something similar um, I was going to bring that up later, just about what they wanted to do. So thank you for reminding me, Dr. Mosler, because I was going to forget about that most likely. But, um, you know, I don't know if there's anything we could roll in or add to that motion about the library and I, I don't know, keeping a certain threshold like the school has tied to that would be good, too. I, I think with the library, let I, I, what I'd like to do is uh, talk to my colleagues tomorrow and also um, get more of an idea uh, of what they want to, you know, some specifics of what they want to do with the library. But I think if, if the board of health feels comfortable with it and it seems like they have a well thought out and relatively safe plan, then, uh, you know, I would love to, to, to let them do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I I, I would like, I would like to know their plan too. And I don't have a problem if they have, uh, different areas that they can corner off and have people go into certain areas um, just so that they're not grouping together. I don't have a problem with that, but I would like to know their plan also. Yeah. So what, how about if I scope that out this week and then uh, I can let you all know at the meeting. That, uh, oh, two well, weeks. I, I, yeah, I guess in two weeks. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe Kristen has more information about what they specifically want to do. It would, it would be in the email that I think we all received. So I can look it up real quick. But, yeah, do you um, have that email, Christian? Yeah, I do. Give me one minute. Um, okay. We can keep talking about something else, but. I must have got left off that email. I didn't see anything from the library, but. I didn't see anything, I didn't, I didn't see anything either. Yeah, they don't, they, they don't really, I can forward it to you guys, but they do not, um, not lay out really a plan. They're just asking for, you know, um, library uh, could get requests scheduled by an appointment basis, but they don't really lay out like what their plan would be. So I think maybe just we could ask them for kind of more of a detailed plan, kind of a standard operating procedure, and then um, maybe get approval from the Board of Health on that or or whatever, but um, yeah. All right, so then let's vote on the senior center and then uh, I'm open to the idea of the library, but I think we just need a plan of, uh, you know, sanitizing and what they're planning on actually doing. And we'll let the Board of Health chat about it first and then we'll we'll take it up in our next meeting if that's okay with everybody. Sounds good. If they're gonna do something like the senior center, one one person at a time, or if they've got two two rooms blocked off or whatever, but uh, as long as they got a uh, time period in between for cleaning. Jennifer, go ahead. Roll call vote. Phil. Yes. Chungalu. Yes. Stanley. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Wiskevitz. Yes. Thank you. All right. Any last questions for Dr. Moser? Uh, yeah, I see Jane, uh, the senior centers were giving them in giving the uh, seniors information about uh, the shots in Springfield. And then I see Amherst has opened up. Do you know where they are with the uh, rest of the uh, DPW water, wastewater shots? I. I do not know anything about scheduling other than seniors over 75 at the moment. And new sites are opening up momentarily. It's really a a moving target all the time. Yeah. Um, What what are we gonna do with shots for the the rest of the 
essential employees? Well, they 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 will have their place in the in the key as as the as the phases roll out. Right now, we're at uh, seventy five and above. After that, will come I believe sixty five and above. And after that, I think are the you know would be teachers and you know restaurant, you know, public service workers. What? Again, after. Well, DPW, water and wastewater haven't missed a day since this pandemic started. Why they're not in the same category with police and fire is beyond me, but they're on the job dealing with the public every day. This is the point I'm trying to make. I don't think anybody's arguing that, but that's kind of above our level here in town, unfortunately. Slightly. <laughs> well, we would we would like everybody vaccinated at this point. Let me tell you, this is uh, this is our goal, but we don't have any control over how they phase it or how they waive it or however you want to put it. Uh, we have to follow whatever they comes out of Boston with the whatever we're told is is happening at this point. All right, everybody, thank you for your time. All right, thank, thank you, you, Dr. Mosler. Okay, all right, we'll move on. Uh, we'll put Tommy on the hot seat now. Uh, we've got inspection department changes for 5.3 and then also the uh, flood district overlay committee 5.4 on the agenda. So Tommy, do you wanna start talking about the inspection changes first? Sure, I'd like to first say, uh, let everybody know that uh, Mr. Dan Lenko had retired uh, as of last week. Um, he's gonna be greatly missed. He's been here close to 40 years as our electrical inspector. And it's gonna be some big uh, shoes to fill, that's for sure. And um, that's what led to you know going through the compensation in that for the alternates and, and uh, electrical and plumbing inspections. Congrats to Willie. Yeah, I think uh, I think he certainly deserves uh, some letter of commendation for his years of service. So if uh, we could do that and have Jennifer do that, I'd appreciate it. I know it's not very much at this time, um, but at least something that we can at least send him to say we appreciate what he's done over the last 40 years. All right. Thank you, Abel. It made a very nice plaque that we, we brought over for him. Oh, nice. So. Thank you. Very great. Thank you, Tommy. All right. And so because of that retirement, we have some reorganization, some changes, right? Yes. And it's, it's, they've been asking for a while about it. Um, Mr. Dan Lincoln as well is the compensation for, you know, per inspection per hour, how they want to work it. So I don't know if you did get the sheet with a comparison for some other communities. Um, yes. And, and when we met, um, <clears throat> basically, uh, Dennis Phil would like to just stay salary like he is. But moving forward, the suggestion would be would everybody, you know, be the same, everybody on the same page. And to eliminate any type of travel stipend and all, the suggestion was 42 per inspection per hour to include any, you know, any travel um, to and from any inspections. Some of the feedback, um, like Dennis Phil said, you're, you know, they're going, uh, plumbing and electrical inspectors going to a, a site where the, you know, minimum electrician plumber is getting 85 to 100 and something an hour. And right now, you know, they're getting 30 an hour and they've got more training, you know, more professional as far as their, um, you know, training and education than the people they're inspecting for, you know, a third or less the compensation. Um, it is still in the fees. They were raised last year. So although we'll cut down on the revenue of the town, it still covers um, looking at it, you know, per inspection, per job, however it be, um, that we're still covered, that the town's still, you know, close to 50%, I believe, in most cases, um, you know, revenue. So what is your recommendation, Tom, for the amount? Was it $45 per hour? 42. 42. 42. So I didn't know if you had this comparison sheet. Um, I did. Okay, yeah, that and, and basically the to go uh, the forty two the extra two was going to cover the travel was a suggestion by one of them. Okay, uh, so 
Is that what we pay them or is that what a, somebody who wants an inspection does pay? They pay per, per permit. So basically, Dee Dee's actually on it could explain, um, you know, what like a, a building permit for plumbing on a house, how, you know, how much they get. It would be, say, three inspections each. Um, as far as what we had, the town would still end up, you know, getting some money out of it. So the, the permit that somebody applies for costs more than we spend to send the inspectors? Yes. Excellent. Yes. No, we checked all that and we're still, you know, it, it, of course, going from, you know, they're 30 right now it, it, and we're across the board. Um, but when I started in May, we had proposed the building um, alternates to get 38 and the plumbing is in, I mean, the uh, yeah, plumbing alternate and, and electro inspectors have been 30. So to keep everybody uniform would be, would be nice too. And everybody moving forward all the same. I'll make a motion to accept that. I think keeping it all across the board uh, at $42 is uh, reasonable enough and it's not uh, actually coming out of any other pocket. It's coming out of the fees already. So, uh, and we still will be making it when they take out their building permit. So that would be my motion to at $42 across the board for our inspectors. I'll second. Okay, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any other discussion? Dee Dee, you're muted. <laughs> Um, just so you guys also know, too, that um, especially with a lot of the commercial we have going on right now, so a plumbing permit or electrical permit can be anywhere from $600 to $1,000. And um, a lot of the inspectors go out, they could go out sometimes 10 times um, just for, you know, uh, the, one of the commercial jobs. So that's why, you know... Um, they're asking, you know, that uh, that they get, you know, compensated a little better than than that because a lot of them aren't putting in also either to for for a lot of the time that they've taken. So, um, you know, that's what that's what they're looking for. That's fine. And this actually includes the review. You know, now with our online permitting, they are reviewing the, the well, which they always were, but they're on, you know, reviewing them and accepting them. So that all is included in the time, you know as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other discussion on the fees? Tommy, there was the other discussion too of the, um, you want when to there's the, the emergencies. Yes, do you want to, I, I didn't know if you wanted to do this separately or not, but we've well, been talking, talking we, about on the- We article. already have a motion on there, so let's just do this motion, get it out of the way, we'll make another one just to make it uh, easy for Jennifer and her meeting minutes. So roll call vote, Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. Thank you. All right, now go ahead, Tommy. Sorry about that. Nope, I thought it would be better to do it separate anyway. Um, it's been suggested you know, since I started, actually, um, Mr. Nyhard has said prior, we're probably, I think the electricians have been out four times on call since I've been here, and not so much the plumbing, but when they go out on a call at two in the morning. So basically we're thinking anything other than 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. when I have to call them out to have a service, you know, check to see if they can turn it back on. Or we have a case on West Street, the service ripped off the um, a house that it would be 125 flat that for coming out after hours. How did it get ripped off the house? When they were Haven West Street, one of the dump trucks didn't put the bed down. <laughs> that actually was during hours, so it didn't, you know, that wasn't such a big deal. It wouldn't have been this fee, but. <laughs> Just to be clear, that was a contractor dump truck, not a town of Hadley dump truck. So, <laughs> so no, they, they paid for it, correct, Tommy? These emergency ones, you know, should be billed out as such, not part of uh, of the job i mean you know if the insurance company's paying for it or, or even if it's a private individual if it's if it's an emergency it's an emergency you should be charged out for it 
Well, I mean, we, we can recoup some of that cost, but I think the inspectors have to be paid in the meantime. Uh, an example would be when um, somebody drove up on the, on the dike on West Street and we had to fight with them for, uh, for payment to fill in the ruts and, and fix the damage for a year and a half just to get some dirt moved around, you know? So I, I think we, we have to pay them something in the meantime, and then we could always go after the insurance companies afterwards to, to, to get that money back. Um, my only question, Tommy, is what about making that seven to seven as normal duty hours rather than seven to five, just because I know, you know, a lot of the fire department guys and everybody else are working longer shifts during the day. It, it just. That sounds good. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And, and I mean, it, it, where it saves, and I don't know, you know, where the, the insurance pays for the fire department, but um, Chief Spanking able, you know, can confirm if, if the quicker they get out there, the quicker we can get the fire department, everything cleaned up as far as turning the power on um, can make a big difference as well. So it's on, I don't know how you go about it, you know, billing it at that point to the insurance, but whoever's paying for the, you know, the people, the fire department, every, you know, other uh, emergency person there is, is going home quicker too. I can make a motion to uh, compensate inspectors $125 flat when they're called um, for emergency by Hadley Police Fire Dispatch between the hours of 7 and 7. Second. Motion by Christian, second by Joyce. Any further discussion? What about weekends? Is that 7 to 7 still? They're on call. Oh, I can I can amend my motion too to just say Monday through Friday. It, it, you know, seven to seven weekends. Asking, I think would be extra. I'm just asking what Tommy meant. We never took that in consideration, but that does make sense. Um, you know, I'm salary, so I'm I'm going out any time. But you know, like I said, there. You know, some of them aren't even from town, so for them to right. come out, you know, Willie was always doing this two in the morning and and that so yeah weekends he's up a sunday with me one time so i guess weekends if you could include it would be great so just to be clear we're our the normal rate is 7 a.m to 7 p.m monday through friday any time outside of that including weekends and would it be holidays too because i know this will probably be a question later mm -hmm. on down the road uh and i imagine federal holidays would also be the the higher call rate right any 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 holiday yeah Okay. Is that what you're thinking, Tommy? Just so we get the motion right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is that a friendly amendment or yes. is Christian uh, adjusting his motion? Christian, do you want to adjust? Sorry. That, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Friendly so, amendment. <laughs> so Christian, you just made that motion with all of the hours and said changes that everybody stated, and that's now your motion? That is my motion. Yes, you have it. All Thank right. you. And yes. that was seconded by Joyce, right? Correct. Okay. Do we want to be specific and say state and federal holidays because there are other holidays that are not recognized? I mean, if we're going to be nitpicky, let's clean it up. How I about mean, if we... day is a holiday and we're not going to pay people extra for going today, yesterday, whenever. What, what, what day was a holiday? <laughs> Can I make a suggestion? Can I make a is I, I, I know my uh, mic isn't working well, but why don't we look at what the town policies are for holidays and apply it to that? That sounds fine, Carolyn. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other discussion? No. Jennifer? Roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. Thank you. We got to make you work for those meeting minutes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Tommy, on that? Nope. That was it. Thank you. All right. So then we'll move on to 5.4, the Flood District Overlay Committee. Uh, I am sorry. There was oh. the appointment for a new electrical inspector. Oh, okay. We'll go back to that then. What I'm do you sorry. Have? Uh, it, it, we've reached out. Paul Miller and I have reached out to all surrounding communities. And the only one we could come up that uh, is willing is um, Peter Murphy, who's retired from UMass. He's been the inspector in Sunderland for years. And, you know, Paul works as a contractor with him. And 
at this point, he's the only one certified we can get. So wondering if the board would consider, you know, hiring, there's no way Paul can uh, do it all himself. Never mind, he can't inspect his own work. I'll make a motion to approve the. I'll second. A okay, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. And to be clear, this is not creating a new position. This is Correct. an alternate inspector that's paid on a per per piece basis, basically per inspection based out of permit fees. Correct. All right. Any other discussion? Jennifer? A call vote Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Ms. Gavitz? Yes. Thank you. All right, now we're on 5.4, Flood District Overlay Committee. Uh, Tommy, do you want to introduce this? And then I have a, an amendment to your list here when you get a chance. Sure, yes, this is, um, we're going to work in coordination with the planning board who's working on a new bylaw. And um, they, the reason this is all coming up is, is FEMA. And not only FEMA, but the conservation uh, fire chief, myself, everybody, um, just concerned not knowing in case of an emergency you know, who a contact to get a hold of anybody on the, any of these uh, trailers, recreational vehicles on the river. So we're trying to make it easier as far as them basically getting permitted if, if that's the way we go with it. And, you know, we can keep, keep track and um, kind of have a checklist of, you know, what, what who's there, contact, um, how many propane tanks, things like that. And, a big thing which will all be new to us as well as the planning board is what the conservation restrictions will be um you know as far as distance from the river anything like that so put this committee together to um you know work with the planning board on all that okay and so the list i have submitted is tom quinlan jr building commissioner zoning enforcement officer uh, Bill Dwyer from the Planning Board, uh, Mike Spakenable, Fire Chief, Evan Bryant, Deputy Fire Chief, Paulette Kozdeba, and Steve Simkowitz from the Conservation Commission, uh, Gregory Mish, Board of Health, Andrew Bombardier, Zoning Board of Appeals, and Delo uh, Didi, <laughs> Permitting Coordinator. I'm not going to try to pronounce your name. I'll butcher it. Um, and then uh, the only addition I'd like to make to that list is uh, Johnny Michikowski Jr. has submitted a letter of interest. And since we don't have a uh, representative just as a resident, I'd like to add him to that list. And I, I talked to Tommy about that and he said he'd be all right with that. And uh, these would also need to be appointed until the completion of the project. So if I could get a motion or something. So yeah, I thought we were going to put some more uh, private people on that board. We got two firemen now. Uh, we got two. Uh, we got a motion from Christian. Could I get a second before we? I'll second. S motion by Christian, second by Jane. And John, you cut yourself off. Go ahead with what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, you got two firemen. I thought we were putting uh, uh, more citizens on there, a couple, two or three citizens on there along uh, the lines of the original committee. Or didn't we appoint the original committee yet? This is the original committee or? This is, this is the original and uh, Johnny, I believe was, the, Jennifer, is that the only letter you have so far? That is the only person that submitted a letter to me for the select board. I think there's somebody on here that might be interested too. Sally uh, Wanuski is interested in possibly being on. I don't know if she wants to say something. Hey folks, yeah, I am here. I didn't submit a letter. I was a little late to the late to the draw there. Um, I live on uh, 173 River Drive in Hadley. Um, and I'm really interested in uh, learning more and, and participating in this committee if there's if there's space for a citizen, um, I am a river user. I'm a member of Yankee Rowing Club in Hadley and Northampton Community Rowing in Northampton. Um, and uh, interested in, uh, I do a lot of emergency preparedness in my work at UMass. So river, emergency, safety, 
That's my that's my goal. Sounds good to me. Any other? Yeah. Uh... No, thanks for coming out, Sally. Appreciate it. Sure, I put my toe in the water, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> Had a girl. <laughs> You're on as far as I'm concerned. That sounds good. <laughs> Does she need a letter or has she just given us her qualifications? She just gave us her qualifications. I think that's good enough. I'm good with that. But Sally, if you could email me so I can get your email to all the right people, that would be great. Yep, sure thing. Okay. And it's info at hadleyma.org. Okay. And uh, Christian, did you make the motion? To approve that? Yes, and I can amend it to add Sally, too. Okay. And then uh, that was seconded by Jane. Jane, are you, can you re-second that? Good. All right, great. Any other discussion on that? Bill, did you have anything to chime in? Nope. Okay. All right. Roll call. Phil? Yes. Chungaloo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz. Yes. Thank you. All right. Anything else for us, Tommy? Nope, that's it. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Good night. All sure. right, we'll go down to 5.5, .5, Board of Registrar's Compensation Recommendation. Carolyn, do you want to uh, introduce this? Sure, this is a request from Jessica Spike That we lost you there. That's that town hall computer. Yeah. That working? Yeah, it is there. Just don't move. Okay. I'm not going to look at my notes. I'm going to hold them up. <laughs> this is a message. Uh, this is a request from Jessica Spanknabel, our town clerk. She would like to change how the registrars are reimbursed. There are now four. Jessica's one of them. So this would be addressing three of them who were, are paid on a stipend but um, are not being utilized for that amount of reimbursement. They get uh, $95 per month, but uh, per Jessica last year, um, she didn't, she used volunteers, the registers, registrars did, were not present at the elections and the other events. So she would like to change it to $15 per hour versus the $95 per month per register. She would like you guys to vote on that recommendation. So moved. Second. All right. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Sounds like a good way to save some money and make sure people actually show up for their positions. Any other comments or questions on this? All right. Roll call. Phil? Yes. Tungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Was Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz. Yes. Thank you. All right. So next on the agenda is uh, 6.1, 113 Middle Street. I'm going to pass over that. We don't have anything to vote on as far as the license yet. Uh, 6.2 COVID-19 update. We already got that out of the way. Um, the library is going to bring us back a plan so we can approve their changes. Uh, I have something. Oh, go ahead. So... We, the senior center would like to know what the town would like us to do about warranties. We had a one year warranty from when we took over the building on June 1st for most of the equipment. Some came with longer, but is the town wanting to self insure or do they want us to search out costs of having contracts with the various suppliers of equipment in our building? You confused me. I thought we were talking about COVID. <laughs> no, we talked about COVID. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know. What does Gary have to say about? Probably building maintenance, yeah. It's a lot of building maintenance stuff. The question is funding it. Can I make a suggestion? I don't. Sure. I, th I think that would be a good discussion to bring Gary into um, and look at exactly what the warranties are and do some homework about, you know, self-maintaining or self-insuring versus the warranties. 
So Haley and I, Haley and I thought that we'd get both Gary and Scott and sit them down and say, okay, these are, we have lists. We're good at that, but you know, which way do we want to go? So we will find out what they think is critical to have backup, if you will, on as opposed to just letting it run and then get back to you. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Um, well, let's roll into any other updates. This is our last time having uh, the building project updates on the agenda. So uh, I just think that, that the, uh, the, the library got its certificate of occupancy. So just in time for this last uh, meeting. <laughs> or Hurrah. Last, uh, Hurrah. Last agenda. Hurrah. So we can close it out <laughs> knowing we have certificate of occupancies in all the buildings. Yep. Fabulous. Three for Fabulous. three. We did it. <laughs> Uh, I have for the fire substation, uh, we are in good order up there, but um, for a continuation of the fiber optic, as we had started with extra monies that we had have, Carolyn, I think um, Mike had called you today on this. Uh, we have $142,000 uh, left by Phil, and it isn't in other budgets that we have for contingency and things like that, but it's the final line. But uh, for the phase two of the um, fiber optic, that comes to about 137,000, not including bonds or um, other things of that nature. It includes alarms running the fiber optic from schools, DPW, Callahan Wells, and actually down to the malls where we have other uh, alarms down there. So uh, my motion would be, I would like us to take a motion tonight to um, move forward uh, where we can get this started and done because it's, I don't believe that we need to go out to bid on this, but because it was part of um, our original uh, fiber optic thing that we had started. So, that's what we're looking to do right now. So I would like to entertain a motion from the select board um, that we move forward with this so that we don't lose track of it and be able to tie in all the rest of these um, uh, departments uh, on this fiber optic as we did with the library and senior center. So um, how does everybody feel about that? How much more is it going to cost to run from the town hall to the DPW? Does anybody have a number on that? The whole, the whole cost, John, is about $137 and some change uh, just for the price alone. That was in the phase two of what we had uh, gone out to bid on when we did the original. Um, it might end up being a little bit more, but there is $142,000 that we have in that plan just in case we need it for for bonding and things of that nature. So uh, I believe we have enough money to cover that. And, you know, I'd like to finish up this project. Um, I think the committee was, um, uh, you know, astute in, in, in doing this so that we could get all of this done for all of our buildings. And I, I think we should continue the process and just get it done and completed. So hope everybody would like to do that. Carolyn, you had something? I do, I do. Um, I think we, just to move forward with that, um, I think you'll be able to. I just need to do, There's there was some review of the RFP, the previous RFP, that there are some concerns about from town council. So okay. I think we're still gonna be able to move forward. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to make this motion so that we can still do some homework, but. I may have to come back again before if, if there's anything we need to do to address some of the issues from the last RFP. Um, I think it's, we'll be able to work through it, uh, but there just may be some, um, and I know Chief's on here now, so I did talk with him a little bit. So I don't know, Chief, do you have any thoughts about moving forward with this uh, motion? Yeah, I would just, I would say just to, to make sure we have all our I's dotted and T's crossed, we are trying to set up a meeting with uh, Comtrack. Uh, they did start putting together answers, which I think will answer all the legals questions. And I don't believe there'll be an issue. 
but we're trying to set up something for Friday. So if you want to just put it off until we have all the information, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be quite a time frame to get the new fiber in anyways, once it's approved. So I would say, let's not, let's just have everything in order first. Okay. That sounds good, but we could do that on, can we do a contingent on uh, the outcome of the meeting and legal so that we could move forward on that? Do you think? Just put it Carolyn? on the for next meeting and that's it. And that's it. <laughs> well, it. if you're doing something wrong, Joyce, there shouldn't be a problem. Well, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong, John, but I'm hopefully I can get it covered and we will certainly, you know, talk about it at the next meeting. But, you know, we all looked at whatever we had done. We looked at our RFP and what we had gone out for, for the original um, uh, bidding. And so, you know, I'm more than happy to do whatever to make it legal, which is fine. Did, did you make a motion, Joyce, or are you you suggesting a motion? I would, I would like a motion, but if, if Carolyn would like me to put it off until the next meeting, I'm more than happy to. I didn't hear Mike saying there was an urgency that we couldn't wait two weeks. Mike, what do you say? It's not an urgency. I just, you, the select board requested that we look into this. I do not believe that there's any issues, but we'll have all that information in two weeks is not going to, it's not going it, to, it's not going to hurt anything. So um, it's totally to the pleasure. I would suggest whatever Carolyn feels is appropriate and um, the select board, that would be the way to go. Oh, you're such, you're, you're such a conniver. I'm, I'm a conniver. <laughs> I agree with you, Joyce. I don't want to slow up the process, but I understand the concern. And yeah, you know, um, I got information later to late today, and uh, I don't after, think after after we talked, evidently. Yeah, after we talked. Yes, yes. <laughs> that'll be helpful too. Yeah. Okay. If, if there's no urgency, I would say if you can wait till for two weeks, that would be probably the most ideal situation. That's fine. I just. I just don't want to lose it because we've come so far with the fiber optic and being able to do with um, getting all of our buildings into it. And this also did include the schools also. So I think it's, a, you know, it's an important thing for us to finish. And once I start something, I want to finish it. So I'm like a dog with a bone. So, you know, don't I hear take you. it, we'll, we'll, don't we'll take it away it from me. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll get it right done. on the agenda for the 17th. So All right. We'll make it a night. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Any other uh, building updates, Senior Center? Uh, nothing? All right. So this will be the last time it's on the list since the buildings are basically complete. And then we'll turn our, our attention to other items and other areas that we can we can improve on. And But we still have to put it on for the 17th. So we're not done with it yet. Well, yes. As a specific yes. agenda item, just versus a building update. Correct. Yes. Thank you. All right, and uh, whoops. Um, well, I have, oh, Route 9. Did you guys wanna go back to Route 9 and talk about that for a second? Sorry, I had to cut you off earlier because we had people with time limits, but did you, John, did you wanna talk any more about Route 9? Yeah, I just, I, I wanna remind all the residents and all the concerned citizens uh, about the bike lanes on the road itself. That the bike lanes on the road are really a safety hazard, as far as I'm concerned. There's going to be a six foot buffer on the north side and the south side of Route 9, a grass area, and then there's going to be a six foot uh, combined sidewalk, bikeway, handicapped accessible, pretty much everything on both sides of Route 9 going down. So the concern, the paper didn't quite explain it correctly. And Joyce, I believe Joyce is saying the same thing I am, that we're just against the three feet or five feet that they're going to put in a road that they already have a sidewalk for on the north side and the south side <coughs> of the highway. Correct. Okay. So... 
uh, Caroline, if the if the paper wants to rewrite an article, they can contact me. Uh, and Joyce, I'm sure, will reiterate what we've just said this evening. So. Yep. Uh, and then you can you can have that. I've had enough. <laughs> I I've, no had enough, I've, I've, I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough paper. I've had enough radio. It's all yours, John. Take it away. <laughs> no problem. And, and again, there's a there's a full set of copies at the DPW. Which, if you make an appointment with the town hall or the DPW, uh, I'll be more than happy to meet whoever wants to look at them and explain it. So, John, I think it might be good if you could um, just. Get a picture of a cross section of the road that shows all of those different things that are proposed, and offer that to the newspaper to print. I so have, a, yeah, I I have a couple of the people that called me already. I've offered to take a picture of them and send it to them, but it's kind of hard to explain in the plan phase itself. Um, uh, what I was looking for was was an actual when they showed us their plan at one of the public meetings it showed you know the green space along with the sidewalks and stuff like that it was a little bit more detailed than the actual plan itself so i think that would be a little bit more informative to to the people that are interested in what we're talking about jennifer is there any way we can post i mean do we have an electronic copy of the plans we can post on the town website or something along those lines because I personally am confused about how this design works and I don't know if I can make it to the DPW yeah. to, to, to look at it so I don't know if we can post anything. They're, they're making accesses from the sidewalk and from the bike lanes they're going to put in the road anyway but you know it's just like I said I, I know if I was riding a bicycle with, with anybody in my family I would not be riding on Route 9. Uh, Jennifer, you were trying to say something. Traffic. Um, Carolyn, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but uh, Carolyn met with MassDOT and I was in on the phone call and at the next meeting, they're on your agenda to go over it again. And they made the offer to run the maps. So they'll be able to zoom in and show them a little bit better for you. So I would encourage other pe people to really tune into the next meeting because they're gonna have the maps and their computers and they can zoom in instead of me trying to find it on my map and pull it up. So you might find that more beneficial. I just wanted to say that out loud. Bill, you had something? Uh, yeah, just to uh, Christian's question, it's a huge file. Um, it is not emailable. Um, at one point, I had access to a download from MassDOT, but uh, from a um, uh, from a download site. It, it's just an immense document. Okay. Well, we'll make sure that we'll leave enough time for. I'm assuming we'll have some question and answer time next uh, next meeting as well, Carolyn. Will they be able to take any questions or? So, and I think we should do that. The other thing is I am, um, I've gotten some messages from Bill Dwyer and from Tommy that there's a lot of questions coming in from the community for various things and some about, you know, businesses and what's going to be taken and what's not. So I am meeting with um, two attorneys from KP Law on Friday, one who specializes in things um, specific to businesses when, you know, MassDOT is moving forward on something. So, but the main point is what I want to do is it's, it is still confusing, I think, for the resident, for the select board members, for uh, committees, um, and myself and residents to really understand uh, what's happening and what, what do they have a voice in any of this. So that it's something I'm trying to focus on having one way to be more efficient and have just one contact so that somebody can answer some of these questions and find a way to get the information out instead of a big, huge, giant file or having to go down to DPW. So I am working on that because there's been very, a lot of people are frustrated. Richard has been very open, um, but I still think we have to work another way to get the public more informed about what's happening. So. Hey. Hey, Bill, does uh, planning board have any detailed, colored detail plans of that 
um, public meeting we had a year or two ago? Uh, no. Okay. I, yeah, I, I don't know what had, happened to that set. I had access to, I think, the 30 or maybe even 50% design plans because I specifically reached out to MassDOT and said <clears throat> I would like to be able to share them. So they gave me a website where I could refer people to to download a set. Um, since then, uh, project management has changed to a different person. Um, I don't have the access to the 100% plans, which I think are what you're referring to at Town Hall and DPW. Yes, they finally, ever since they changed their uh, engineers, uh, we finally got the 100% plans. Uh, it was a question of four lanes to three lanes. Now we know it's three lanes. Now we're getting into the details of the land taking and uh, the bike lanes. Uh, so it's kind of ongoing all the time, and they're, they're changing their minds as we speak. So. It's like COVID sites. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, then um, move on. So under not anticipated, the only other thing I wanted to bring up is uh, we had talked last time about on Honeypot um, dealing with um, uh, the land by the landfill there. And so I wanted to get authorization uh, from the board to bring over two truckloads of loam there and just dump them so that way the farmer can um, fix the area that needs to be fixed. But apparently this needs to be done sooner rather than later so that way they can get the, the loam spread out and plowed under and ready for, for springtime is what it sounds like. And so I didn't wanna do that without select board authorization to do that. And with the understanding that these two dump truck loads, that's, that's the end. Um, if it doesn't solve the problem, I, I understand the town may have created some of that problem or the contractor did, but, you know, this is it. I, think, that, yeah. I think that's a good solution. Is two, are two truckloads sufficient or should we send three just because we have he, lots of loan, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he said he was fine with two and that was good. But if you want to send him three, I'm sure he wouldn't reject it. Let's uh, send him three. I okay. move we send him three. Okay. I spoke to him. He's supposed to get the soil samples to me. I gave him my email address so I could share them with everybody. Uh, he, he had it done by, I believe, Helena, the chemical company. Uh, they do sampling and they tell him what the land needs. And if it's up to three loads that he needs, I, I'm more than willing to give him that to, to make this problem go away. But uh, as soon as I get that stuff from him, uh, I'll, I'll get it to the rest of the board. Well, shall we make, can we wait until that on um, the 17th, see if John gets the uh, report from him? Why does it matter what the soil samples say? He still needs dirt. Yeah, I, I mean, the soil samples, that's how he came to this conclusion, but he doesn't have them from uh, USDA and the people who did the testing. So he's researching that and supposed to be getting it to me. So as, as far as I'm concerned, it's all, already all been tested. And this is what they, the conclusion they came to, to best repair this, this bit of damage that's along the fence line there. I, I mean, I think too, we have all this loam from these projects. It's staying in Hadley. It's, you know, uh, it makes, solves the problem we have with him, hopefully. And well, let's, we let's, think, let's think about this for a minute. So if other people are having problems at different areas and we're set up setting a precedent now. So is this the thing that we want to do? Well, well but what's the difference between a problem and a, you know, he's saying the contractor that did the landfill left clay there in that land. How many, how many years ago was that? The issue is that the town was responsible for that project as opposed to other people who may have problems. Well, I'm, I'm going with two. He can have two look, truckloads. The motion suggested. is for three. <laughs> what? The motion was for three. Now I'll give him two. 
I got a motion. I need a second of some sort, one way or another. I'll second it. All right. So motion by Jane, second by John for three truckloads of loam. Uh, any further discussion on that? Sounds like there is. I'm going with two. You want to do three? You don't get my vote. All right. Well, we got to vote on the on the three, unless Jane wants to change her motion. And, nope. and Joyce, what are you worried about specifically? People asking for more field issues, growing issues in fields, and then people asking for more loan. Correct, because we have we have a lot of properties that abut the dike, and whatever. So whatever happens down the road, you may become liable for whatever. So I'm just saying. You haven't done any construction on. On the dike or the, on a field side. The only construction we've done on a dike is on the river side where it's failed. Correct. All right. So, um, Jennifer, roll call vote on the three truckloads. <laughs> um, roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungalo? No. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Thank you. And and for the record, this is this is the end. The uh, so we've we've we're trying to make good, trying to solve the problem. So hopefully this takes care of it. So all right, um, I'm going to pass over the uh, departmental department liaison reports for now. Um, do we have any announcements this evening? I don't have any tonight. Any other announcements? Events? Anything? Okay, well, our next meeting is February 17th, and it sounds like uh, Mass DOT will be there. So hopefully we'll have, we'll set aside some, a good amount of time to spend with them and hopefully get some questions answered. And um, if nothing will else- Will there be time for the audience to ask them questions also? Um, I'm okay with that. I, yeah. I think, hold on that, because that would be, I think if people have any questions for TOT, they should submit them to the select board prior to the meeting. Yeah, the administrator of the select board and we any questions and let us run the meeting with DLT. Correct. Carol, Are you considering a public hearing? I'm just wondering if, if we're gonna treat it that way, well, if we'd have to advertise right away. We yeah. get to make sure that that was on, that agenda was posted soon. I no, my concern was that people would think that they would have the opportunity to speak. It's not a public hearing. Those have all passed. And if people do have questions, I think letting the select board run the meeting and submitting their questions to us in advance is appropriate. Okay, so we can do that. And it won't be a public hearing. But if people Correct. have questions they would like us to ask on their behalf, we can certainly do that there's no guarantee we can you know if we get 100 questions we may not hit them all um but if there seems to be a need for a public hearing maybe we can get mass dot to do one in the future and i think but they, they they may be the same questions that are asked by 100 people so right. if we can decipher out those and pick the ones that are important to all i think that's the proper way to do it you can't open it up because there'll be lots of questions but again if people can submit them to the select board, um, that's appropriate. Okay, sounds good. Um, all right, so if there's nothing else, if we could get a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. S motion by Joyce, second by Jane, and Jennifer, roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Thanks. See you on the 17th. Have Thank a you. good day. Stay safe, everybody. Be well. Bye.